Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, yesterday was July 4th in the US. That is known as Independence Day. And as part of Independence Day, many people like to set off fireworks. You know the whole celebrating the independence of your country by blowing up a piece of it? Well, that got me to thinking. What would, uh, what would it take to build a conventional firework to uh, get it into space or even to orbit? Well, it turns out that most rockets that are you buy from stores or whatever were, are powered by black powder with a with a paper casing, and uh, it's very easy to go out on the internet and find that the specific impulse of a black powder rocket comes to about 80 seconds, and you have to compare that against many other rocket engines are, that are up around, you know, 280, 300, 400 even at the high end. So these are hugely inefficient rockets. But it's not enough to know just about the efficiency of the fuel. You need to think about the construction, the paper casing, what it adds. Now, most rockets that you would buy for fireworks purposes don't really have, uh, you know, the flight parameters coded on them. But in model rocketry, the engines at the low end of the scale, the A to E class of engines, they use black powder as well. And the rocket manufacturers provide a nice table of data that lets me figure out just how many of these I'd need to strap together to get up to orbital velocities. So if you take the largest model rocket motor that you can generally buy, that would be a Class E. That generates about 30 newton seconds of thrust, uh, and its mass is about 56 grams. So you plug those numbers in, and you get a specific impulse bordering on about 50 seconds if you're going to use you know, racks and racks of these things all bound together with some sort of magical stuff that doesn't add any weight to the structure. Now, if we want to plug those numbers into the inverse rocket equation with a target final velocity of about 9 kilometers per second, which should be enough to get into orbit plus some, you know, aerodynamic and gravity losses, it turns out that your initial vehicle to final vehicle mass ratio is about 93 million to 1. Or, to put it another way, if you wanted to put one kilogram into orbit, you would need about 100,000 tons of fireworks to do it. That's about a thousand times the amount of fireworks sold in the US every year. Anyway, I decided I want to try doing the equivalent of this in Kerbal Space Program. That is, I wanted to build a rocket out of Sepatrons. And as it turns out, it isn't quite as easy as I thought. You see, when you have all those little engines in proximity to each other, the physics goes a little strange, and quite spectacularly so. I got my own form of you know, virtual fireworks here. It was rather beautiful, actually, watching all those pieces scattering themselves far and wide for the entertainment of the Kerbals below. Well, at least the ones that are safely in the, the, the bunker there. To me, it feels as if as the part number grows and the physics gets more complicated, at some point the time step gets too big and the whole thing just gives up and you get instability. Anyway, this was a second one I attempted, or this was another one I attempted. You see, using um, part fuselage part sections here to try and make it, <laughs> it just it is in it is incredibly bizarre and funny. Also interesting to note is that the part values or the thrust values for Sepatrons have changed over time. So the initial version of Sepatrons had higher thrust and they burned for longer, but their dry mass, their empty mass, was a lot uh, higher, so they were less efficient. So yeah, many previously valid uh, Sepatron driven rocket designs are no longer valid right now. Anyway, this is what I came up with. You see, it using um, it's using these fuselage, you know, width adapters, so I can build tiers or chandeliers, let's say, of uh, sepatrons. Also, I'm using the tweakables to make these things burn at different rates, so that I'm trying to keep the thrust. Early on, I have like four Gs of thrust, but then after I get up to about 120 meters per second, the thrust is dropping off in each stage to about two G because I really want to avoid aerodynamic losses, so I'm being very careful here. You see, this is the, the bottom stage there is going to burn out sooner, and that will bring the thrust down, and therefore stop me wasting tons of energy fighting against aerodynamic drag. I also had a bunch of stuff earlier that was entirely there to uh, get the thing up to about 100 meters per second as quickly as possible. So this actually has a surprisingly few number of stages simply because we're using the 
uh, we're using tweakables to reduce the thrust. Now the specific impulse on Sepatrons is about 100 seconds, which makes them really, really terrible for any Kerbal rocket. But uh, actually it makes them better than your small model rockets I was talking about earlier. However, they're not actually as good as the nearest real world equivalent. The nearest real world equivalent, yeah, I remember I mentioned that uh, model rocket classes that you can buy from for amateur, like small scale, go from like A to E. Well, the scale actually continues to hot, build bigger and bigger amateur rockets. And these, with their 56 kilonewton uh, total burn, total impulse, whoa, and then you get some weird physics going on in this stage, incidentally. Uh, <laughs> So these would actually be classified as Class P, which I've seen mentions of in a few cases. Uh, somebody built a model Saturn V, which is supposedly the biggest model rocket ever, and it included a single Class P plus n like eight other Class O rockets. So yeah, we're getting small and light now. Interesting thing I also should point out that this is all recorded using Cheat Engine to slow the tick down by a factor of four and then I've time accelerated it in post-production. The reason is that with 1200, 1300 parts the physics was running at one frame per second even at four times slowdown to, to let it catch up. So. <laughs> I think some of the part rigidity stuff that was added in the most recent version perhaps had a negative effect on the stability of these rockets. But look, we're getting up to about apoapse and we just need to keep burning these engines until we get up to orbital velocity. You see there's eight of these and they're set up in pairs so that I can fire them and trim my orbit. But then I get to this last one and we just go into a ridiculous elliptical orbit. So, mission successful! Happy Independence Day to all you people in the US and Canada, July 1st, and your French and Bastille. Listen, if you've got some holiday in the summer, have a great holiday. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>